Hi there. In this video, we're going to be looking at a two source DC resistive network. I have one drawn here. We have a battery, which we call V1, 52 volts. Another battery, V2, which is 8 volts. We've got a 4K resistor here, one here, a 3K resistor up here, and a 1K resistor on the end here, and terminals A and B. And what we'd like to do uh, as a task is determine the voltage between A and B using the superposition theorem. Okay, so we're going to determine VAB using superposition. So we've got two um, DC voltage sources here and what we need to be able to do is to determine the contribution from V1 on the left here solely. That means replacing V2 with a short and then determine the voltage between A and B um, solely uh, contributed by V1. Then we will um, replace V1 with a short and put V2 back in and we will determine a contribution then from V2. Then we're going to add that contribution um, from A and B from V1 and V2, add them together and superpose those two figures and we should arrive at the actual voltage between V A and B. And of course afterwards um, when we've been through the theory we'll have a look at uh, producing the same results on the simulator. Okay, so let's have a look first of all then at source V1 only. <coughs> okay, so a quick sketch of what that circuit would look like. Uh, we go V1, 52 volts, there's a 4K, there's a 4K, no battery here, we're not considering V2 at all and of course we've got the rest of the circuits over that way there's A, there's B, 3K here that's a 4K and that's a 4K resistor also okay now then we've also got resistor here uh, which is 1K what we'd like to be able to do is to determine this current here, IL. Okay, we consider this 1K resistor as a load resistor, um, but this is only a current contributed by source V1. So that superscript 1 there, we can denote by superscript dash, so a single dash there, so IL dash. Okay, that's come, come from V1. Later on, we'll have a look at IL double dash, and then we're going to add IL dash and IL double dash together. That's going to give us our target answer. Okay, what we also have coming out of V1 is a current here, um, which I can denote by I1 single dash. Single dash meaning the one. Okay, so one dash for, for V1 two dashes for V2, etc., as we'll do shortly. Right, now to be able to start a solution to this problem, what we need to know is what's the resistance that battery V1 actually sees in this particular configuration? Well, let's call this, shall we, um, let's go for a different colour, let's have a look at RT. So the total resistance, RT, contributed by source battery, if you like, number one. And that is going to be equal to, well, the travel this way from v, V1, you're going to see this 4K resistor. Okay, so 4K comes in plus, and then we're coming along here. You can go that away or that away. Okay, if you go to the right here, then you're looking at well, you're going to journey through a 3K and a 1K, which is 4, and that is in parallel with this 4 here. Okay, so it's going to be 
4K times 4K. So these are in parallel, so it's product over sum. 4K plus 4K. And that, of course, is going to be equal to, well, 4K plus... 4K times 4K gives you 16 million. 4K plus 4K gives you 8,000. 16 over 8 gives you 2. A million over 1,000 gives you a K. So that's 2K altogether added to the 4. So a total of 6 kilo ohms. That is our value for RT dash. So in terms of the current which emerges from the battery, this thing here, I1 dash is equal to the battery voltage itself, which is 52, divided by the resistance which the battery actually sees, which we've just determined to be 6K. Okay, and work that one out, of course, we're going to have 8.666 recurring, so recurring we put a dot over the 6 milliamps. Great. Okay, so what we've decided is that we've now got a current flowing down this leg here, which is 8.6 milliamps. And that is going to be shared that way and that way. Now you can see some symmetry here. Uh, there's a 4K down the middle branch here vertically, and there's a 3K and a 1K, these two. Um, add them together because they're effectively in series over there. So we use current division, and we can say, okay, let's just write that in, current division. gives us IL dash is equal to that supply current towards the branch there, which is 8.6 recurring milliamps multiplied by. And then for current division, what you do is you say, I want to know the current going along the top here, this branch down there. So I need to multiply by the other resistor, that one, and divide by the total resistance in the two paths, which is, of course, 8K. Okay, so again, we're gonna have some cancellation here. The K and the K will cancel. The four over the eight gives you a half, and half of 8.6 recurring milliamps is going to give us 4.3 recurring milliamps and it flows downwards okay so yeah 4.3 milliamps flows down through the 1k resistor <clears throat> okay so that's halfway through the problem what we'd now like to be able to do is to determine the current um, flowing through the 1k resistor solely um, produced via v2 the second battery source okay so source v2 only so source v2 only little sketch of what the circuit looks like over here we've got a short on the battery now so we've taken the battery away we've replaced uh, it with a short link if you like Going across to A and B. Here's A, here's B. That's a 1K, that's a 3K. Here we've got 4K. And below that we have V2, which is our battery. And it's 8 volts. There's a 4K here. That was 4K. And what we'd like to be able to do is to say this thing here is now going to be current through the load resistor due to the second battery, V2. Okay, so IL double dash. All right. What we also have is a current emerging from the battery, battery V2, 
which we shall call well why not call it i2 double dash okay so now what we need to be able to do is to say what is the total resistance seen by this battery v2 well it's you know if you any electrons that um you know spin around this circuit are going to be go initially and to be looking at charges um, need to go through the 4k resistor then they will split okay and that way and that way if you go left you get a 4k path back to the negative of the battery if you go right you get three plus one you get another 4k path going back to the bottom of the battery okay so in essence what we've got is um, RT the total resistance seen by the second battery so let's call it RT double dash is equal to we've got 4k that's the one connected to the positive terminal of the battery plus and then we can see a parallel combination of a couple of 4k's one goes left and one goes right but they are effectively in parallel so we can have 4k times 4k over the sum of those product over sum again 4k plus 4k and as before it's a similar calculation we find we have six kilos okay so then we can say the current i2 double dash which emerges from that battery is equal to the battery voltage itself which is eight over 6k and of course that is going to give us 1.333 or 1.3 recurring milliamps and then by current division what we're seeing is 1.3 milliamps flowing in this direction uh, splits left and then right okay and so what we do is we say take the supply current to that junction 1.3 recurring milliamps times the other branch so the branch that we, we're not interested in which is 4k all over the sum of the two branches so 4k plus 4k okay which is obviously 4k over 8k k is cancel it's going to be a half um, and this thing of course is going to be equal to il double dash okay so il double dash is equal to well, a half of 1.3 recurring milliamps which of course is 0 0.666 etc 0 0.6 recurring milliamps now superposition says take those two answers which you got we got il single dash 4.3 recurring milliamps we got il double dash is 0 0.6 recurring milliamps we can therefore say finally IL is equal to IL dash plus IL double dash <coughs> and I would like while we're doing this to indicate IL dash was determined as going downwards and so was IL double dash because sometimes in problems one current can go up and another can go down so you need to be careful on directions okay so the answers to this lot are was 4.3 milliamps recurring plus 0.6 milliamps recurring which of course gives you 5 milliamps exactly 
Uh, let's change color because now we can say the voltage between terminals A and B is equal to I times R. Well, I is 5 milliamps times the resistor value between A and B. That was the 1K resistor. Okay, so we've got 5 milliamps flowing through that 1K resistor. So V equals I times R, 5 milliamps times the 1K. Okay, the milli and the K cancel out. The 5 times the 1 gives you 5, and we end up with 5 volts. Okay, let's see if we can reproduce this result uh, on our simulator. Okay, and we've gone into the microcap simulator here and we've redrawn that circuit, which we just analyzed, 52 volt for V1, 8 volts for V2, there's those couple of 4Ks, 3K and 1K terminals A and B. And all we want to do now really is to determine the currents and the voltages, especially the voltage between A and B, and we're hoping that's going to come out to be 5 volts and all we need to do, we've got our earth in which is important we click on analysis and then we go for dynamic DC little dialog box pops up here, bring it in a little bit and I can hover over this fourth icon here which tells us node voltages click on that and hey presto 5 volts between point A and point B. And point B, of course, is on the earth here. Okay, so that confirms the voltage. Let's take the voltage off. Let's have a look on the next icon, the fifth one, which is currents. And it tells us indeed here we have five milliamps flowing from left to right across this path and through that 1K resistor. Okay, so that all confirms our theory. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.